On our last episode, we were taking a look at this talking notepad electronic message center made by Maverick. And you may have noticed by the end of that video that the unit was not operational. I couldn't record. So, as a result of that little problem, I took some proactive steps. First thing I did was I replaced all of these capacitors on the audio board. As you can see over here, here's all the old ones laying there. This is a list of all the capacitors that you would need for this unit. There's some duplicates in there as well. In fact, I found the capacitors that I needed all in the same kit at Micro Center, my local Micro Center, and I paid $15 for the set. And it's going to give me a whole lot more capacitors for future projects than just this little Maverick player. So there's uh, the contents of that kit or the box of capacitors. So the next thing I did was, uh, as I told you in the previous video, I replaced the microphone element with a different one. And the original one turned out, turned out, turned it out, turned out to be louder than the one I replaced it with. And although they look very similar, here's the, uh, the one I replaced it with, which came out of an answering machine. Uh, the original was much louder, so I put it back on. And the last thing that I did was I replaced the belt that you see here. So that's as far as the repair of the unit goes. Then I had to go a step further and replace the pressure pad that's on the little tape that it came with. So even after all of that effort and work, I still couldn't record because the original pressure pad had rotted away inside this little tape and by replacing it with a new one, I was able to record. And I'll demonstrate that for you here in a moment. But as far as the uh, pressure pad goes, what did I use for that? Well, I bought some of this Frost King uh, weatherizing strip. It's a roll of weatherizing strip for uh, your house, I guess for a window or a door. And as you can see, it's self-adhesive. So all I did was just cut a little bit of that off of that roll, and I've got a ridiculous amount of extra padding that I can use for 8-track tapes or cassette tapes or other old tapes that have a deteriorated pressure pad. So now, without further ado, let's demonstrate this amazing unit in action, and you'll actually get to see it working with the lid off because I have wired up a power supply to the unit so that we can see it in operation. Now, many of you in the last video were telling me that I needed to press this button that's on here, which actually isn't a button at all, but it's just an indicator. And uh, I'm trying to figure out where I put it at this point. And I'm not seeing it here amongst my stuff. I must have ran down the hall with it or something. Well, anyway, there was a red button that people saw uh, approximately in this location right here. And the button, all it was was just a red flag, just a little plastic red flag that when you pushed it down, uh, would reset it. And if it was on the upside, then it would indicate that there was, in fact, a message waiting for your family member. Oh, and I just found it. Here it is. So it was this red thing. It's a button, and it's a spring-loaded button message waiting. And uh, But that has nothing to do with the recording process. So uh, just so you know. All right, so let's push in the tape. It's ready to go there. And uh, I think I'll play back what I had recorded on there last night, just to test. We'll see how that goes. All right, this is working perfectly. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. Tonight, we will have three or four guests, all of which you will not like. And those who you do like, we won't have them on very long because they are driving us crazy, and they'll drive you crazy too. We are grateful for your listening to our show. All right, so you can see the little white uh, tab that came back in there. So that's where I've stopped it. And then this is the switch that does the recording. So I'm going to push that in and then reach over here and press the button. And let's make a recording. 
Hello everyone, I want to thank you for being a part of the DataBits YouTube channel. Thank you for being a part of vintage electronics and other electronics that I have found in my uh, adventures of finding old electronic items. And so I hope you've enjoyed seeing the restoration of this machine. All right, so that's done. Now let's play it back. Hello everyone, I want to thank you for being a part of the DataBits YouTube channel. Thank you for being a part of Vintage Electronics and other electronics that I have found in my uh, adventures of finding old electronic items. And so I hope you've enjoyed seeing the restoration of this machine. Hello everyone, I want to thank you for being a part of the DataBits YouTube channel. All right, I won't play the whole thing again, but as you can hear, it records, it plays back. It's got a little bit of noise in the audio, which is probably due to the cheapness of this amplifier that you're seeing here. But uh, anyway, we're done, guys. I really appreciate you staying with me and encouraging me. Some of you actually wrote in and said, well, you know, we're disappointed that you couldn't get it working and, you know, really helped out. So in any case, if you find one of these, uh, you'll have an adventure in repair getting it working again. And uh, you may or may not need to replace all the capacitors, but as cheap as capacitors are, it might be fun to go ahead and replace those while you're at it. Please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave a comment below.